So these are the monks of Load Runner 2. Good job, guys. All right, this is how the game is supposed to start. This is the jump station. The jump station is the first real world that you should start in if you want to start the game proper. Now, from the jump station, we notice four directions and a really weird, looks like a ladder right where we land. Um, give me just one second, I need to see something. Is there something underneath here? Because if I was gonna hide something, I would hide it underneath the area that, yeah, there is a ladder, so there's something down. Well, um, well, the good news is, I heard the sound effect of an extra life. The bad news is, I'm dead. All right, let's try that again. Um, let me just get that extra life first before we start exploring the jump station. Anyway. The jump station is essentially the beginning of the game. From here, you can access any of the other worlds within the game. Oh, there are two extra lives down there. Any of the other worlds within the game. But starting from here means that you go through every world. Uh, so let's take a look at some of them. Uh, this looks like under construction. A great world if we could get to it. Uh, this, what the, uh, does, I, uh, I, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction here. Alright, um, let's pick a different world to start with. Uh, let's go up here. What is in this direction? What world can we find here? Well, we have another under construction. I guess that's where they put the mall. Uh, I don't think we'll ever be able to go to the mall. Um, and here is... Looks like an industrial world. But this gives me flashbacks to the engine room in Banjo-Kazooie. So I'm not gonna go there, at least yet. I need to find a, a world that, that's good to start in. Something that that feels very Load runner e like the classic. Um, all right, here we have two areas. This looks like a series of pipes moving Okay, this looks like a more geary and clean focus version of industrial. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it's much more cleaner and it seems to focus more on gears than it does on industry. Um, this is beautiful. And I think this might be my favorite design period for this entire game. But because of that, I'd like to save it for last. So, that just leaves one final direction. And there's only one more world. There's actually five worlds in four directions. Two of the worlds are in one direction and each of the others, I'm presuming, yes, they have an under construction area. Just makes you feel sad of what could have been if they could have made all the rest of the worlds. But all Load Runner starts in the jungle. Load Runner 1, Legend Returns started in the jungle. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start in the jungle after banging my head against the uh, tree branches and tree roots. Welcome to Jungle World. Now seriously, that's the name of this level. The first level in any world is introducing you to the aesthetics of the world, what kinds of things you can expect from it. So for example, these diggable weathered stones combined with these, I think, yes, diggable grassy areas kind of give us the impression of a, a civilization in the jungle, essentially. And that little plant-like thing and all these plants are probably undiggable. Um, anything that moves is undiggable. I don't see anything moving. Okay, now I do. That's not just a plant, that's a creepy plant with an eye. Oh my gosh, is that a human eye? I, I don't wanna know. Anyway, um, so the ladders looks pretty standard. We've got tree trunks and um, the tree brambles and branches. We've got monkey bars that are actually vines. So 
we're getting a good introduction to the aesthetics of this world. And we get a little bit more here. We've got clouds, we've got running water. So yeah, it does give the impression of a civilization that's since been ravaged by time. Uh, those plants over on the far right look really pretty, especially that one that decided to explode pollen. No wonder my voice is off today. And then we have what we are... Um, these are the undiggables for this world. Instead of being metal grays, which wouldn't really fit, these are more like hard, overgrown, um, whatever the name is for a plant that's very, very hard to break. Like most plants, or most trees, or you know what? Why am I looking at a flying saucer? Okay, not just ancient civilization in the jungle, but ancient civilization with aliens in the jungle. We are done. Let's go through that big gaping mouth. Another thing about the last level was that it was a scrolling level. The entire level did not fit on just one screen. This level fits on just one screen, so we get taken back to the basics a little bit. Other than that, this level is a pretty run-of-the-mill level with an annoyingly loud monk. Nothing seems too difficult. We can jump down here because there's a corner here that we can use. We have some of those, like, railings in the form of tree branches. Up here we can... I think the main thing is that we should probably take all the gold on the left side before we go to the right side, but it looks like we can still jump back to the left side from the right side if we needed to. All in all, a pretty simple run through the- Let me just, just walk into this for no reason. Okay. Other than that, the only real challenge here is getting past that monk. And that monk has a clear path to him. There's an undiggable in the intersection, so we won't uh, dig there. Instead, we dig pass that to uh, make the monk get up and hopefully he doesn't die. Okay, good. Like I mentioned, it's always a good idea to not kill monks if you don't have to because they might spawn in annoying locations. Let's just put it that way. Well, this world is extraordinarily simple. We got some monkey bars on the left and right we have to use to get to all the gold and we can dig down only by one to get the gold below us. We don't have to worry about getting stuck because there's corners available. So let's just admire the really, really beautiful sides. I think this level is only designed to illustrate the artistic abilities of um, art. No, but seriously, this is really, really beautiful. And these would make really great screenshots to show off how pretty this game looks. our first real challenge. We've got a purple monk, not a blue monk, so it's a bit unpredictable. It could follow us at any time. So let's try to avoid it. I don't want to kill it because I don't know if it'll respond in a bad position. So he doesn't follow us up the ladder, which is good. So let's take some time to think. We have some gold underneath us that we can dig to get to and then fall off a corner. Or we can dig here and get that gold. Or we can do both. If I dig that one block right below me by using this double digging, now I can access both sides. So I can get the gold more quickly. Um, I don't show it on the video, but after you finish any level, it shows you a high scores in terms of how fast you've beat the level, and that's a great way of optimizing how fast you beat a level. And I always dig in two places, because I never know if the monk's going to actually turn or not. And I try to lead the monk away from where I want to go. And I have a bad feeling he's going to die. I hope he doesn't respawn in a very bad place. Anyway, let's take the other side. Good, he did not. He went right back to where he was. 
I want to get that extra life. It doesn't look too difficult. I'll just have to dig this corner out, and then dig that out, and then that's easy. Gamey. By the way, in the uh, two-dimensional load runners, you can always tell if there was a block underneath you, um, because it was 2D. But in, in 3D ones, you can't really tell, is there going to be a block where I'm going to be digging? Uh, there usually is, because that would be unfair if there wasn't. We cannot just jump onto those gold, because we'll be stuck. We have to blow those away first. We did not want to be stuck, because otherwise we could only dig into that area with those five gold, and then we'd be really stuck. But those two things we blew away is a setup for another puzzle. In order to get that gold, we have to dig out two blocks over here or over here, and run in, get the gold run out quickly. Complicated by the fact that we have a monk outside, complicated by the fact that the gold is in such a position where we kind of have to get it really quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the monk to try to get a good distance away. I hope he doesn't see me. And he saw me. He saw me instantly. Okay, uh, we're going to have to deal with this. I had to blow a hole while I was standing in a block that was about to phase in. That's why I blew away the block closer to the gold first, so I'd have more time to get out if I'd stand there. Thankfully, we got away from him, and we can get out of this level. A bit simpler than the last one, but still presents more of a challenge than the other ones. We cannot fall off the corners because these plants are in the way. We obviously can't fall off of an edge. So the only way down is to either dig onto that end portal and jump off, which we can't really do and get all the gold because there's that foggy area that blocks everything, or do what I'm doing right now and dig down to that piece of gold, run around to the ladder and climb up it. And then go for the last piece of gold. Making past this monk shouldn't be too much of a challenge. Purple, but still no undiggables in the way. All right, we could handle this in one of two ways. We could dig straight down to the gold, like we did before, and potentially risk running into a monk and having to get out quickly. Or we can recognize that we can fall off a corner, dig on top of the end portal, and then just watch the monk casually walk by us because he's blue and therefore he's blind. Hope no one hit anything behind that tree. All right, this looks rather interesting. There's a purple monk down here. I don't know where he's gonna go. Probably up the ladder. All right, all those pieces of gold are behind. We have to blow away a wall in order to get to them, but we can't just keep going that way or we'll just fall in. And we can't dig that because there's an undiggable there. So we can't just dig a straight line path. And all this time we've got a monk on our tail. So, if we're going to want to get to that piece of gold that we were getting to earlier, we're going to have to dig in an interesting shape. This shape here should give us the ability to reach that single block that we need to dig out to get outside so we can get the gold and escape without falling in by accident or not being able to dig at all because of the undiggable. So that's the trick of this puzzle. We're constantly on the run from the monk, and as we're on the run, we have to figure out how to dig in non-simplistic or linear patterns to reach each piece of gold that is hidden underneath this little block structure. I want to be careful here because there's no railing, so I can easily fall off if I get nervous, which is likely to happen. Also, I do not want to start digging now because that monk is on his way. But if I time this right, then by the time I get to the bottom, he'll already have be up to the top so he won't pursue me. And I was right. And the simple option for getting that gold is undone, so I don't want a monk to be on my tail while I do that, so I'm going to give myself as much time as possible by falling off of this corner once he climbs to the top of the ladder. If I want to get that piece of gold, I'm going to have to dig three blocks offset from the undiggable just like this. Now the only trouble now is to get to the portal without freaking out and falling off the edge. When I 
that was pretty intense. After all that training the tutorial put us through, it's about time they let us use items and bombs on the left side, as you can see. Which asks the question, which way should we go? I'm gonna go left because the right has a monk on undiggables, and I don't feel like dealing with that right now. Also, the left has a bomb and a gas can, which looks kind of useful. That monk over there is on undiggables. If we want to get the piece of gold on the center island, we're gonna have to take out the monk using a bomb. Digging will not work. Question is, where should we put the bomb? The monk travels from here to about here. So dropping the bomb either here or potentially here with the power of the gas can should be enough to break the monk. So let's pe grab the gold and let's place the bomb. Be careful to stop when you hit the button to place the bomb, don't be running, because if you're running, you place the bomb where you currently are on the map, not where you're looking. All right, pieces of gold that are, oh. We're gonna have to drop onto the monkey bar, go back in, grab the piece of gold, Wait for the monk to come back and then go back, grab the piece of gold, jump on the vine, grab the piece. There. There's a pattern to this. If I keep. I swear, I think I can pull it off or I can do two at once. And. Yes. That was close, but you can do two at once if you want to. I don't want to anymore, so I'm not going to. Hey, I never said I was good at this game. I'm used to games where I can take my time, like. Jewels of the Orc, or... Yeah, that one. So I'm just going to play it really, really safe here and stay inside the little cubby until the monk comes back. I'm not even gonna take a risk here. Wait, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna go quickly. I agree, monk. Well, this level is quite big. In fact, I don't even know what this level is dealing with. Let's go down this ladder first of all and take a look. All right, there's a lot of inlet areas of gold, but no real clear path. So I'm gonna take the following solution. I'm gonna just do it. I'm gonna start at the very top, dig to there and see where I can go from there and hope it works out. I can dig one here in order to get to that lower level, and there's a little bridge where I can access the gold on all sides. This little railing prevents me from falling onto that part. Those undiggables prevent me from digging onto the right side. It looks like I cannot access the right side of this little monolith structure thing as easily as I can the left side. There is a command in this game that allows you to scroll the world so you can see further away. I'd like to see if I would actually fall on something that isn't death. Unfortunately, on my Macintosh emulator Sheep Shaver, I cannot get that to work. So I, I can't tell if there's like safety or if there's something bad below me. I can only take a leap of faith and find out that I'm on an edge and not a, not a corner. All right, anyway, it seems like if I wanna to get to that right side, there is something, there's some ladders going down. It looks like there's something down there. And the most secure and safest way to be sure is to dig like this and take out that block right at the corner there. So I'll have access to the ladders. I'm assuming the ladders are someplace that isn't bad. And there is a landing here. So I assume we could have jumped off of something and made it without a problem, but we didn't do that, so. This level doesn't have any monks. It doesn't have anything too tricky. It's more of like a run through the level and just do it kind of thing. Um, the way the foliage looks and the way the level is designed, it can be a little bit disorientating, but not like Idana level disorientating. All right, ladders on the right, falling on the left. I'm gonna live a little bit. Can't go back up and now I wish I could. Um, 
let's dig him out of the way. I don't know where they respond to so far, but I do know I have to go over here to get the gold. I want to go back to that side. But he died, so I heard the respawn electrical sound, but I don't know. Okay, he's up there. So they start at the top and they fall down to where they originally were. And this is why purple monks are kind of more dangerous than black monks sometimes. Because they're unpredictable. You might dig a hole hoping they come to you and they go in the opposite direction. And then if the hole starts spawning back in as they're approaching it, you can't just dig it back away again at that same instant. So unless you have a place you can back up to, you're, you'll be kind of screwed. But enough of that. Let's do this. All right. We gotta dig a hole here. So I'm gonna use these ladders to get back up. <laughs> you bitch! Admittedly, that did take me by surprise. Anyway, let's get back to where we were. All right, not falling for that trick again. So this is what happens if you dig a hole underneath a ladder. Monks are clever. They'll grab the ladder and just bypass it completely. And speaking of which, I probably don't want to kill any monks now. Remember, they spawn at the top and work their way down. If one of them dies down here, they're gonna get right in the middle of me trying to climb back up to the portal. So hopefully that should slow him down but not kill him. Maybe I might have been that too early. Uh-oh. Let's get to the portal really quickly. Alright, so there's a piece of gold in that little alcove, but we can't get to it without taking out one of those blocks, and someone decided that straight ladders are annoying, so they made it crooked. So we have to dig out a block so we can get the gold and escape, otherwise we'll just be stranded. And complicating matters are two monks and a area with holes in it that kind of makes it rather difficult to navigate. So we have to, hmm, I have to time this right so that the monks, <sighs> of course, instead of going towards me, he goes all the way around. Okay, I have a chance now. This level has a very chaotic design to it, it appears. Anyway, we can go back up now with that piece of gold under our control. We can now uh, take the second monkey bar to go to the other part of this level. All I've got, I'm gonna go down here and Okay, I made the same mistake once again. Just have to wait for him to come. Just have to wait for him to come. Just have to wait for him to come over. Okay, just go in circles. I mean, this is um, this is a demonstration of the artificial intelligence within. Oh, bugger! I almost ran to the wall and killed myself in uh, Low Runner Two. So. We have to time it right so that we land when the blue monk isn't there. Actually, you know what? Fuck that. Remember, don't dig where the ladder is. Or do dig where the ladder is if you want them to go across it and eat you. I mean, it is your game. This level feels very piecemeal. Um, I hope there's an end to this ladder and it doesn't... Okay, good. We just have one little blue monk to deal with. And that isn't too challenging. We can just run past him. And then go straight up to the exit door. Or you can make me go around the entire island in order to get to the exit door. That was annoying. We finally get to play with the Infizo power-up. Assuming we can get to it. Alright, so I'm gonna start with the gold down there next to the purple monk because it's closest. Alright, let's get him over here. Let's try that again. Alright, let's get him over here. Fine. Anyway, I'm 
not gonna kill him because I don't want him to respawn somewhere stupid. So instead he's just gonna kill himself because he's a complete moron. All right, so ignoring him, let's just go through the rest of this level. We have a purple monk on the monkey bars who saw us almost immediately, so let's get out of there and wait for him to get gotta lure him away from it so that he goes back onto his path and doesn't get stuck like that again. Let's wait for him to get a little bit further away. And okay, he went over there, so I have time to grab this gold, and I have time to grab that gold down there. I think I'm pretty sure that that's a corner. I hope it is. Yes, it is. Okay, good. Why is there an alien chasing a guy on that little stone pillar over there? Anyway, I want to get all of that gold in there. So instead of t doing it in two trips, I'm gonna try to do it all in one. At least, except for that one stray gold over to the left. I can't do a straight three dig because of the ladder, so I'm just gonna dig in this shape here. If I didn't have advanced digging set up for my controls, I would be screwed about right now. There are so many times I've messed up digs like that using the basic controls to the point that's why I consider them completely worthless. So, for the pieces of gold in there, it kind of reminds me of that other level that we did a while ago where you had to dig two out where there was a monk waiting for you. But I don't think this is nearly as difficult. In fact, I think we can jump in there right now without worrying about anything. Well, not jump in, but have to dig in. That stray piece of gold in that little cove area suggests that there's already a way to get out. If I just uh, line up a dig here, then I can take advantage of that already open space to dig there and get out of there. Now there's only one more thing I want to get in that area, and that would be the Inviso Power-Up. My guess would be that the Inviso Power-Up is intended to help you with the purple monk that's up there. But if those pieces of gold on that little pillar are any indication, we might have to make two trips. Because uh, I'll have to think more when I get there, but I'm not seeing a way to get all three at once. But we'll explore it when we get there. Gotta wait for the monk to get a little bit further away. I might as well activate the Inviso now. And I accidentally trapped him. That's actually really useful. Hopefully he won't see me over here and I'll have time to think. I don't see a way to get all three pieces of gold at once. Simply because um, there's too many holes that make it impossible to stand in one place and dig out everything I need to. So I'm going to instead opt to uh, dig these two out. This allows me to access this one and adds an opening for me to access the one there. Yeah, actually there might have been a way to get all three at once if instead of digging out those brambles, I dug out the little... Um, pillar indented thing, but, well, there's no way to fix that now. I already did it. Uh-oh, he's coming this way. Stay there. Alright, time to get that last piece of gold. Now, as I said before, if I had taken out, um, I could have gotten that gold on the past um, time when I got the other two earlier. Oh, and uh, swinging off the ladder is a great way to get off an edge. Alright, so we have... Oh, dear. This is a black monk. He's going to follow us the entire level. We're going to have to think very quickly because we're not going to have any rest. First, that gold right there in the corner. Can get it easily because it's on a corner. We can fall off of it the moment we dig to it. So let's do that. He's going to swing off the ladder in this direction. So let's get him here. 
and for the gold up there inside that little cove. We're gonna have to do the same thing that we did in one of the past levels. We're gonna have to dig out two, but that black chunk is gonna make things a whole lot more challenging for us. So let's knock him into one of these, and then build our path, and then try to get that gold before he starts climbing out. All right, um, <clears throat> if we wanna get back up, we need to bring him back down. So once again, put him into that hole, climb up. If we want to get to those last two pieces of gold, uh, the first one, the one closer to the ladder, is a very easy one. As long as we just land on it, we can use the corner to get off of it. The other one looks like it's embedded, looks like it's harder to get, but, there is a tree trunk uh, to the side that can act as a corner. It's a bit harder to see um, because it's not the same style as the stone around it, but it will act as a corner for us to use. We just have to break out the moss bricks over here as opposed to the regular bricks we broke earlier. There we go, now we can fall off. Now this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna run through the portal and people are gonna complain. Erica, that's not 100% completion. And I would be like, screw you. And they would be like, no. So, I will go and I will get the sodding extra life even though I don't need it. There you go. Happy, I am. All right, this looks like a pretty normal level. We've got uh, a cityscape, a ladder, a UFO in the corner, and... What is that? Well, I think it looks like a donut. Like, Fluttershy, it obviously looks like a bagel. I think you guys are both wrong. That looks more like a really messed up horseshoe. Well, whatever it is, I guess we'll find out later when I've recovered from the shock of it all and get back to this.